This is the Adrenal Insufficiency video series. I'm Ana and Vaidya. And this is part three of the video series where we'll take a general introduction to secondary adrenal insufficiency. Secondary adrenal insufficiency is also a general term that refers to the inability to produce adrenocorticotropic hormone, ACTH. And this is generally due to some problem with the hypothalamus and or pituitary gland, which make ACTH. This deficiency of ACTH results in an impaired adrenocortical production of cortisol. Therefore, secondary adrenal insufficiency is typically characterized by cortisol deficiency. Secondary adrenal insufficiency therefore requires treatment with glucocorticoids. So let's uh, use an illustrative case to set the stage. This is a 62-year-old woman who has had several months of unexplained fatigue, weight loss, and headache. Her laboratory studies show mildly low sodium hyponatremia. Additional laboratory studies show a low morning cortisol, but also an inappropriately low ACTH. So you can recall from the first two videos in this series that cortisol production is entirely dependent on ACTH. If there is no ACTH, the adrenal glands will not respond to and make cortisol. In contrast, aldosterone, another key adrenocortical hormone, is not entirely dependent on ACTH. It is also independently regulated by angiotensin II and potassium balance. Therefore, even in the absence of ACTH, aldosterone regulation is typically normal. And then this entire hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis responds to the circadian rhythm in the body's internal clock, as well as stress. Both ACTH and cortisol are augmented in situations of illness or physical stress, and the absence of that augmentation can cause critical or severe illness. So as you uh, also recall from prior videos, here's the pathophysiology of secondary adrenal insufficiency. There is some problem in the hypothalamus and or pituitary that results in an insufficient or deficient production of ACTH, such that even though the adrenal glands are fine, the adrenal cortex is not injured, it's not receiving a stimulus from ACTH. And as a result, there's a deficient production of cortisol. So the key laboratory manifestations are a low morning cortisol and an inappropriately low ACTH. This is in contrast to what we saw in primary adrenal insufficiency in a prior video, where in response to a low morning cortisol, there is a very high and robust ACTH production. Here in secondary adrenal insufficiency, both cortisol and ACTH production are low. Patients may or may not have hyponatremia, but importantly, because aldosterone production remains intact, potassium levels are typically normal. On physical exam, some patients, despite having a low cortisol due to secondary adrenal insufficiency, may look relatively normal and may be relatively asymptomatic. However, over time and with increased physical stresses on the body, patients may develop mild and progressive fatigue to severe fatigue, orthostasis and low blood pressure, and in situations of stress where there isn't a compensation or sufficient compensation of cortisol production, severe illness, adrenal crisis, or even shock. Acute secondary adrenal insufficiency refers to a deficiency of ACTH that is relatively short-term, days, weeks, maybe even a couple of months. <clears throat> As a result, the adrenal cortex still remains intact and if you were to stimulate the adrenal glands with exogenous cosyntropin, that is exogenous ACTH-like peptide, the adrenal glands will respond robustly by making cortisol. And so you know that the deficiency of ACTH has been short-term if you can prove that the adrenal glands can still make a robust amount of cortisol when stimulated by exogenous ACTH. In contrast, Chronic secondary adrenal insufficiency refers to a situation where the deficiency of ACTH has been long-term, many months or even years. ACTH is not only a stimulant of adrenal steroid hormone production, it is also a stimulant of adrenal cortical health and growth. So with chronic ACTH deficiency, the adrenal cortex, mainly the zona fasciculata, the layer that makes cortisol, will gradually atrophy and will progressively respond less and less to ACTH. So with long-term ACTH, you can see that there's general atrophy of the adrenal cortex, such that even if you gave a robust amount of ACTH, cosyntropin uh, by IV, there's still a suboptimal response of cortisol production. What can cause secondary adrenal insufficiency? Essentially anything that can injure or impair the hypothalamus or pituitary. This could be a mass, a primary tumor or metastatic tumor, infection, uh, inflammatory or autoimmune infiltration uh, and or trauma. 
Actually, the most common cause by far of secondary adrenal insufficiency is what we call iatrogenic. It is induced by the medical establishment by giving glucocorticoids. Glucocorticoids are medications that are used widely in medicine because of their potent anti-inflammatory potential by virtually every specialty in medicine. And as you recall from prior videos, glucocorticoids interact with the glucocorticoid receptor expressed in the hypothalamus and pituitary to induce a negative feedback. So when high dose glucocorticoids are given for a variety of anti-inflammatory causes, they can induce secondary adrenal insufficiency as one of their side effects. Other medications include medgesterol, often used as an appetite stimulant, and opioids that are often used as analgesics or uh, for pain. A general approach to the treatment of secondary adrenal insufficiency is shown here. All patients with secondary adrenal insufficiency require supplemental and physiologically dosed glucocorticoids, such as hydrocortisone, prednisone, or prednisolone. <clears throat> patients with secondary adrenal insufficiency typically do not require mineralocorticoid supplementation because they have normal aldosterone production. And as always, all patients with adrenal insufficiency require specific instruction on what to do when stressed or ill or in emergencies. And we'll cover all of these in subsequent videos, uh, particularly uh, the detailed video on the treatment of adrenal insufficiency. So to review, secondary adrenal insufficiency is a general term that refers to the inability to produce ACTH due to a problem with the hypothalamus or pituitary. This deficiency in ACTH results in an impaired production of cortisol. So secondary adrenal insufficiency is really characterized by an isolated cortisol deficiency. And as a result, all patients with secondary adrenal insufficiency require treatment with glucocorticoids. So this uh, concludes part three of the video series, and you can now move on to part four.